spirit of celebration time as you proudly honor the history and heritage of our sweet Belize, a nation strong and united, faithful and compassionate, a people resilient. Though 2020 has hit us with challenging times not experienced for over 100 years, we stand firm and strong like Tiger in the cruel proverb, Tiger Maga, but is strong. Let us rise as proud Belizeans and boldly sing our national anthem as we pay homage to our home, our jewel, Belize. Thank you, our children from Gulisi. What a joyous occasion when we can all raise our voices and sing, proud to be Belizean. Overcoming diversity, creating opportunities, Belizeans unite for prosperity. Let us embody our 2020 theme as we continue to forge ahead with faith. We welcome Reverend Barbara Rosado, as she prays to our nation, our people, and the world. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, first and foremost, we give you thanks for the blessing of this day. Lord, we give you thanks for the opportunity to be able, through this means of technology, to gather to commemorate and celebrate the open of this year's September celebrations leading to the 39th anniversary of our independence. Father, as we are mindful of the fact that during this time our celebrations are not what we are used to, help us to remember that as individuals, as a community, as a country, without your presence we are nothing, but that it is united that we will be able to overcome the adversities that we are currently facing and will face. Help us to remember that we need you as a part of our lives and decision-making processes as leaders of our household, as leaders of businesses and institutions, 
and especially as leaders in positions of public trust and authority. Father, your might and strength is unmatched and indescribable. Help us to realize that true and divine inspiration comes from you. Help us to use your divine inspiration to be able to continue to seek means through which we are able to create opportunities not only for ourselves and our families, but more so for our communities and for our nation. Help us to be able to submit and surrender ourselves to your will and to seek opportunities to create through which we will be able to not only recognize, but also be able to respond to the needs of those who are less fortunate than ourselves. Father, though we cannot physically gather, help us to realize that we are able to gather in heart and in spirit, as we are by this means in this moment, as one people, as your people, Help us to recognize that unity and togetherness goes beyond the use of the same words or being in the same physical space. That unity goes beyond being of the same political or religious ideology solely for the purpose of celebration. Help us to recognize that true fellowship, fraternity, and friendship comes only when first we are united with you and each other in the bonds of love. Help us to recognize, Lord, that it is only when the needs, rights, and common good of all our citizens are fought for, respected, and honored as equally important that we would have begun the process of unification for the purpose and prosperity of all. Help us to understand, Father, that it is only when, as a people, we are bounded in spirit, unanimity, and understanding against oppression, violence, victimization, and stereotypes that we can truly claim to be a united people. Lord, as you have guided, bless and protect us as a nation for these past 39 years. We pray that you continue to hold us in the palm of your hands, not only for this day or for this period of celebration, but indeed as we chart forward together the future of our nation. Lord, our glory and honor and praise are due to your name, for you alone are the source of our strength and salvation. We look to you, Father, as we seek to overcome adversity, as we seek to create opportunity for all, and as we as Belizeans unite for the prosperity of all of your people. We commit ourselves, today's activity, and this nation into your care, through the name of your most precious Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Redeemer. Amen. Ceremony. Thank you, Rev. Over the years, the launch of the September celebration has been showcasing our multicultural nation by broadcasting from various locations across the country. In 2020, we are launching in beautiful Dangriga, culture capital. This year, it is fitting that we should host our launch in the cultural capital of Belize, a place where the resilience of humanity reigns. The Garifuna people have been an example of grit, fighting against injustice and refusing to be victims of the unscrupulous Europeans, goal to fully colonize and Christianize indigenous peoples and the subsequent genocide when they were displaced from their home in St. Vincent and dumped in Rotan, Honduras. Later, many Garinago fled Honduras due to one of the many wars to find refuge on the shores of Belize, then British Honduras, settling in beautiful Dangriga. But Belize's history also showcases other peoples who broke the shackles of slavery and colonial control to establish and prosper in self-sufficient maroon communities in the interior. These maroons, runaway slaves from the Belize town, as it was known, 
settled in nearby Gales Point, Manantee, or Malantee, and demonstrated a similar sense of grit and perseverance while practicing and preserving African culture. Yet, another example of people's daring to survive are Maya brothers and sisters, descendants of one of the most dominant indigenous societies of Mesoamerica. The Mayas were the original inhabitants of the Jewel from as early as 1500 BC and built great structures rivaling those in Egypt up to this day. The modern Maya also comes from this great bloodline of survival and still fight to keep the traditions alive. All these cultures coming together form the rich culture and agricultural economy of the South. Stan Creek welcomes you. Beautiful Dangriga welcomes you. Briti Hashiluru, Recibi Wamutu Wageru, Briti Rambawi. To officially extend greetings on behalf of our, of our municipality, welcome our chief executive council, history teacher, and history aficionado, and my teacher and classmate. Plus, two times mayor, Francis Humphreys, as he welcomes the nation to Dangriga and to this joyous occasion to share his perspective on our celebrations and participation in this historic broadcast. Belizeans at home and abroad, I present to you Mayor Francis Humphreys. My fellow citizens of this blessed, truly wonderful nation we call Belize. Last year, during the annual celebration of what we have come to call Dangriga Day, we served notice to our community that this year, the celebrations would take on new meaning 125 years of official existence, both as a township and as one that was awarded its own local or municipal administration. You see, on the 15th of February, 1895, the colonial authorities saw fit to bestow on what was then the tiny village of what was then named Stan Creek, the official status of township, along with the first district board to administer local affairs, both inside of what was then Stan Creek Town and Stan Creek District. It was a remarkable achievement given the fact that the community had been in existence for less than a hundred years. So, it was more than fitting to take stock, look back, and give full measure of observance to this important step forward. In fact, we actually came up with a wonderful slogan under which we proposed to celebrate our 125 years as a township. Tangriga at 125, vibrant, visionary, victorious. In Garifuna, that translates to Nibagariti, Dise Tarihi, Ganyeti. But alas, even though we were fully geared up to have a wonderful commemoration and as the fates would have willed it, to also host the launching of the September celebrations for the first time, that we now struggle against and called the novel coronavirus derailed, indeed smashed all of our grand plans. We have seen the devastation and the challenge 
the adversity that this pandemic has wrecked upon our nation. But we are surviving. We are facing the challenge on bold and not on bended knees. Indeed, the lessons that culture capital has learned over the past 125 years about being resilient in the face of adversity are precisely those lessons which we can translate into facing this particular challenge and overcoming it. We can look back at the stand that the Baymen took when they were faced with the adversity of a seemingly unconquerable invasion force in 1798, and they overcame that adversity. They put in place the foundations for the coming of other ethnic groups to enjoy all the blessings and advantages of what has become our wonderful nation of Belize. Indeed, from then until now, the nation has been crafted and made stronger and more resilient by adversity, right up to the attainment of political independence. And so, even though our plans to celebrate the coming of age of our township and the annual September celebrations, we will continue to cherish in our hearts and in our souls the need for patriotism and nationalism in these particularly challenging times. We must continue to be visionary in all that we do so that the adversities we face are set aside, defeated, and become stepping stones to a better nation. We must continue to be vibrant and forward-looking in everything we attempt and eventually accomplish. And so, through the use of modern technology, we are having an official launch of the September celebrations, underscoring that with adversity, we can find opportunity and we can reach the prosperity that we all aim to observe and to really enjoy. So, it is with heartfelt pleasure that I say to everyone, let us celebrate, not necessarily in the streets, but from our hearts and souls, realizing that without this blessed nation, we have lost our birthright. So let us celebrate, reminding ourselves that we shall overcome this adversity and we shall propel this nation forward to a greater level of prosperity. Happy September celebrations to all and let us continue. <laughs>
when um, the Garifuna was in St. Vincent, that time it was um, Chatuwe was the leader. They killed Chatuwe, and the people of uh, St. Vincent, these were the Garifuna people in St. Vincent, they was exiled from out of St. Vincent and put onto an island they called Baliso in the eastern part of St. Vincent area there. And for, on that island, they stayed about uh, a year. And I went to that island there when I, when I went to St. Vincent. And I tell you, that island is barren. I couldn't imagine after the, the exile people to Baliso Island that these people could have survived I couldn't understand that these people could have survived that kind of um, punishment there. And from there, after a year, they take them down to Honduras. And in Honduras, there was a little a, a conflict happening with the, with, the, with the Spanish government. And the other Spanish government came to them fighting. And then the government then went to the parties then. And they lose the war. And from there, <coughs> It was, they moved on to, to Belize. That was the only way they could have survived from that time movement came from Honduras to Belize. They then in Belize in 1832, they landed here in Dangriga. And after that time in there, the people started to live right here in Dangriga. What is the essence of the Garifna people? More and more we are talking about Aubu Amurinu, meaning I for you and you for me. I believe that that is the essence of being Garifuna. We have an obligation to look after the land, the sea, the air, nature. The thinking being that if we take good care of the earth and everything that is in it, the earth will give back to us. I for you, you for me. And there's also that relationship with the spirit world. Um, the spirit world consisting of the great spirit that is God. Um, the ancestors, those who have lived and died and moved on to another plane of existence. And also those who are not yet born. But notice that it isn't you for me, I for you. It starts with me, I for you, Aubu. I for you, it starts with me. And then it comes back. We have been wooed away from, our, from the land, away from self-sufficiency. If we were to go back to our Garifuna ways, guess who the farmer is in the Garifuna community? It's a woman. The man would clear the land, and then the woman would take over because we are a cassava people. And um, so the woman would plant the cassava, plant and process the cassava. And, um, and since she's planting cassava, may as well plant your cocoa and your, and your you know, your plantain and, and so on. I guess as a family, my father and my mother then sticked out and raised the 13 picnic power farm and they bring we up just the way we they wanted us to be without any kind of indoctrination and outside interference a normal day of, of cassava processing would be for six in the morning Going to the fields, go up to that 12 to 1500 pounds. You have to plant at the right time for the correct moon, weeding, and management of the fields to get your best output. Okay. You're going to the fields, up root by, you know, take about three hours, you come here in the shed, you do the peeling. We, we look for other help to do the peeling because it's, it's very slow and manual. Okay. So sometimes we get neighbors and friends and other people for for help. And after the peeling, then the washing, then we click into what we call um, mechanize. We don't upgrade the system and this one with the wood grater, with the libo, lavatam, are the traditional way. From there you go to the straining process. That will where you 
full up and hang for the top to bottom where somebody have to hold it up there and then you fold it and then you shake it up. When you don't shake it up for compact, then somebody sit down on it, add weight on it, make a stretch and now squeeze out the juice. That will take you 30 minutes, two people. They press, it take the same 30 minutes, 200 pounds and one person. Then we come to the sieving. You have a basket, a wrong basket, and then you shuffle it out with your hand all day. That replace with one sieve, we call it sieve. Again, everything invented and created by the old man, and that sieve just vibrate at the bottom, it crush for the top and vibrate the bottom, come out ready for cook for the kumal. The kumal, one bird take about five to seven minutes, depends by the temperature of the firewood and how fast you could control and maneuver with the temperature. Pelican, for example, serve it as a, like a introductory menu. We probably give a bowl of chips and dips where they make out a cassava bread. Instead of um, pack bread crumbs, we have a, a cassava bread crumbs. So then you don't shake and bake out of the cassava bread crumbs. We could do 32 different products from the cassava tuber. At this point, we only do like seven major products. Seven major products that are the cassava bread, pure and natural. We have the cassava additives where are spicy, cassava spicy, cassava ginger, cassava um, garlic flavor. We have the cassava bread gums, like I said. We have the cassava starch and cassava flour. Our music is so rich that you can take a, a song from the Dabuyaba, convert it, and you get a hit. But is that what we really want? You know, is that what we want? I don't think so. We have to respect our spirituality. We have to respect our sacred songs. I don't think I've heard um, Super G make that mistake. I don't think I've heard Pen Cayetano make that mistake. Go back to the days of uh, Punta Rock when um, Ken Stark named Punta Rock back in, from his Moho Street um, studio, no? And that was way back in the, in the 80s. There were some conscious songs um, that they produced with messages. I think we need messages like those, that especially in times like these, I was in Totomar, we used your music in 1973. And then uh, I remember there was a song called El Rey. And El Rey, when this, when this music played in Totomar, people were bowing their chest and say, oh, I'm the king, I'm El Rey, and everybody feel uh, enlightened by that song. I said, oh, it's great culture in, in Mexico, in Totomar. So I have been thinking for a very long time in my, in my head, and I come to be, I come back from Chetamar to Dangriga in 1975, and uh, play along with a little band around here. I used to play along with Isabel Flores in his group, and he taught me about to play the drum. And and one day there was a time, there was a time when there was a tribute to Tigi Ramos on the 13th of November. The youth was oh the youth was. Really off. Because this drumming was not for the youth at the time, it was for the old, for the adult people, right? So the adults had their drums. Youths have no drums. So when the time, when the, the tribute was happening now, I think the youth stuck. They, they went for the drums from the front. It's a very focus and wanted to make all kind of things, all kind of destruction, no? And they wasn't singing the songs the way how the songs were supposed to sing it and all kind of, oh, vulgar, everything happened inside the crossover. And I was along with the group from the Civil Chorus watching that scene there. And I said, man, these, these children, these, these youths need their drums now. I think they need their drums. I started playing drums at the tender age of five years old. I grew up in a very cultural part of town known as Baka Town. <laughs> By the age of 13, I was recruited to a few groups 
I started to explore Garifuna culture a bit more under the guidance of Mr. the late great brother Moses Roysus Bragal. He taught me the discipline of Garifuna drumming, and with this discipline, I was allowed to play for some of the top bands around. While I played with these bands, I was often asked about the significance of Garifuna drumming. But outside of playing them, I myself did not know much about them. This changed when I started touring with the late great and the Palacio and the Garifuna Collective, and later on taught a class at Galen. I was forced to learn. The people, the people, that's it. Sim the, the drums, it's a people and a people that, yeah, that symbolize the drums. These are the people behind it. That makes people come together. Yeah, and that's the symbol of the drums. Bringing people together. The music of the Garifuna people, I think it's basically, was, it's come from Africa, you know? You know, the Garifuna is a people mixed with um, African and the Amerindians. So the African music, that was, that was the, I think that was the, the, the touch the people have that makes them the Garifuna people. The drums, you know, that music. St. Vincent will play a little drums, but in Honduras, the drums have developed more. From Honduras, they come to Belize. And the same thing happened here in Belize. So the culture was around that drumming and that grouping thing. I started looking at my drum and started exploring a little bit. This is what I came up with. I looked at my drums and looked at its different parts and found a way to describe each part as it relates to the wider context of the Garifuna culture. The shell is this part. It represents the core of who we are as a people. At our core is the concept the way a female would say I for you and you for me. The way a man would say, I for you and you for me. We are a selfless people at our core. The vine represents connectivity. Yes, as a Garifuna culture, we are here, but we are connected to the world in that wider circle of life. The skin represents communication whether it's verbal communication, whether it's communication through painting, communication through music, whatever form of communication that might be. The rope is the glue. It takes all those different parts, brings it together to make it a whole. The pins are the tuners, represents Garifuna and non-Garifuna people. And then we come to the snares. The snares gives resonance when I play my drum and it is that resounding voice to tell the world that we are here. As a Garifuna people, we are here to stay. The segunda drum on the left-hand side of the middle drummer in this picture it represents those that have gone before us, our ancestors. The segunda drum on the right represents those that have not yet been born. And the drum in the middle is us. Lanigi is the heart drum. This drum sets space. All three drums together represents all life. And there's a mutual obligation among the three where we look to our ancestors for guidance and knowledge. Our future generation will be expected to do the same and also look up to us for guidance. I will leave you with this. The concept of God in the Garifuna culture is not masculine. It's feminine. It is important for our women to understand their role. Take your place within your homes.
within your culture, within your society. Lay that solid foundation upon which the family and the society depends. You are that foundation. Hagaya! Ayaha. Where are they? They are here. Hagaya! Ayaha. Where are they? They are here. Our women are here. Our women are here. Yin lumuti wachalara. Gari na gubagia ay. Ay, gari na gubagia ay. Gari na gubagia ay. There was a woman who brought me two turtle shells. And turtle shells, I said, well, this, she to let me paint on it, to paint on it, not to play, to paint. So after I didn't paint on it, I said, I started to top it on it. And I guess a song. I said, this is a good song for me to talk shell there. So I keep the shell. The lady come for the shell. I said, I don't have no more shells. I said, it's the last and everything. But I have it for the turtle shells, right? And from there, there comes Mohabab Flores. He joins the group. I tell him, listen to the chocolate shell, holy place. He was, he was a drummer, so I tell him, listen to the chocolate shell, holy place. And I say, oh, it's a good song. And from there, he, he, Miami come in, Miami, the drummer. And Higgins, and from there, the group sort of grow, little by little. And, and we went five more whole roads. My tongue there, five more whole road we do. And from there we do a roadblock in Tong, in the center of Tong, maybe by the by the bus stop, and the bus stop was by the riverside. And we did a roadblock there and it was very it was crowded and people liked the song. So I said, man, this is a good so everybody said it's a good song. I'm going to Benopan first to Benopan to play a little music there and we went to Benopan. And from Benopan we say we're not going to Dangra, we're going to Bidi City now. I went straight to Bidi City. We sleep overnight. Outside too, because there was no kind of hotel for us. Outside, we sleep outside. And the morning we played at the Central Park. It is Bidi City. First jamming in Central Park. When you come out in the Central Park in the morning, it was, oh, people was there selling some fruits and clothes and everything was around, barbecue. And so Rock Hall was there. And we started to play. Shells. And you know, people started to say, well, I see they started to listen from two uh, all over the all over Belize City, the people had to listen to the song. They said, Oh, this must be some good song. Up up to Radio Belize studio and we make the song Hu Yama. Ya Ubu Balis. That's the song we made after the rain with us in the center of the world. From the history. <laughs> I was born in Belize City and I grew up in Dangriga, the culture capital of Belize. And 45 minutes from here, we have a village by the name of Wales Point, where we have some other African people that plays the music that goes by the name of Samba. To the best of my knowledge, Wales Point came about when we had some runaway slaves. In those days in Belize, we had slaves. And these people didn't want to be conquered by the Europeans, so they ran away and they went to this place by the name of Pierce Point. It's a peninsula in the Belize district. In those days, it's all, it was all the way in the, in the country. They have preserved the music, the Sambai music for Belize for many, many years. Sambai is a music that is done in the moonlight and it's mostly, mostly of a fertility dance. We know that our music comes out of Africa originally, especially the drums. We are the cradle of civilization. The music traveled across the Barren Strait. This is Jimbe drum. This is one of the most known drums in the whole world. We call it the Sambai drum, but actually it's the Jimbe. The whole world plays this drum. We brought this with me wherever we went. We brought our drums with us. If you don't even see our drums, it's in our soul. So wherever we get to, we will make drums, because that's where our heart beat is. If you notice, we love to dance. 
We are dancing people. When you're punishing us, we sing. When we're working hard, we sing. Anything we do, we sing because we are connected with our Father. Imagine you bring up and ship you know, the bottom of ship for months and months and they don't let people dead say that you have. The only thing you have is fear. That's our strongest part of us, the fear that we have in our mind. I myself, I'm a soul of Jah works. Everything I do, I pray about it and ask for guidance for it. I remember here in Jamaica, Jamaica and just when the start corner early, I mean the Jamaicans used to live down here. Here I want to make a comment about bells and the banner. Just everybody know they play reggae in a Jamaican. And as a young man, I hear that and I said to myself, the sister is saying he's doing the people music and could tell you where they do away and they do But if you do your own music, nobody can tell you right or wrong. And immediately like Jack hit me with my inspiration and say, you know, thing, I know I want music to come out of the music. I decide, you know something, we need for how we want the visa and music. And I pray about it, and the word Congo come up because Congo means let's go. When I'm a smile and we say Congo, that means all of it, let's go. I get to hear about the Maya music, everybody music. So I decided I'm going to give a point to hear what happened to give a point. I'm going to give a point one evening, they go down there. They get there, I hear this rhythm, but this one, a different rhythm, but everybody into it. These are like black people there. Man, these are like Africa, one fire being in the middle, and people they dance and the drum they beat. And the people when they dance and enjoy themselves so much, you feel like the peninsula, the rock. I actually feel like the peninsula, the rock. I say, what? No, no, but this music, I come and we have Jankuno, we have Punto. Jankuno again, one of the main music, right? But we got all of this, Adam, we got. When I get there, I say, black people, they do the nearly the same thing. But we don't hear about this. We only hear about what they have in Adam, we got. I know people that we don't know about this. And people that believe don't know about this. I say, nah. You know, just give a recording studio to us. So we have to record this before we lose it. I talk with some of the, the brothers and sisters and thing and Emmett and some of the other brothers. Eh? And we decided and get some people together and we we'll record the music. We we'll host some one of the song. But when we play the music, the beat be kind of different talk. Even the DJs have never played the music enough. But when the music get quiet, I said to myself, no, the music kind of like, I don't know if I have a go for you know. But if I take this music, and I mix it in at the Congo music. Make a still happen. So the first song where I take that my plantation. And when I put that in the Congo music, bingo. Right away the music blazed right up again, up until today. What you really tell me that one hell of a thing when you go to your roots. There is nothing in our culture that they should be ashamed of. Um, and that um, we have a lot of a lot in common um, in our view of the world, our worldview, with other indigenous people uh, who lead the way in preserving the earth. Those to the Kalish, so he started here in 1976. All originated from the Toledo district and decided to move towards the middle of the country. Now, we did this because in those days, already there were displacement of people because there were people who were also buying pieces of land for themselves. We are, we, are, we are Maya people, and therefore we live on the, the Indian uh, reservation. And you don't own it. So when we came here in 1970, we created a village. We created a way to bring ourselves by doing, uh, by doing, creating our school, creating our church, and bringing our people together and started a life that we are going to be responsible to, to take care of. And that is how Maya Center started. As Maya people, we soon realized that I shouldn't be too shy about my culture. Indeed, when I dress up, you know, people look at my culture and people that visit us are actually seeing authentic culture here. To us, that was one of the most powerful exchange that we had. Besides the, the, um, 
regular touristic activity. We thought that maybe we should look at the cultural component of being Maya people. We are Mopan Maya, we speak Mopan, and uh, because we are so strong about Maya culture and being Maya, we decided, well, we should not only talk about culture, we should live the culture and we should encourage it. And so we started to look at that and, and, and then we created this building here for that purpose, where we wanted to highlight some of our food, we wanted to highlight some of our religion, we wanted to highlight some of the language, and we wanted to also look at the medicinal values of plants, and we also like to do a little bit of spirituality, which all explains about us as Maya people. And if you put all of those together, that makes that makes a whole idea of being a Maya and what it means to live out here. The preservation of culture is something that, that has to happen. I speak my language, and that is very important. Um, uh, if I lose the language, then I feel I've lost a lot about it. In this community, we have all sorts of local food, especially the, the, the Maya caldo and the tortilla. The caldo is a, is, a, is a Mayan tradition. You can only eat that usually on special occasion, right? There's going to be a marriage, there's going to be a baptism, there's going to be a feast, there's going to be a celebration. That's what you do. You prepare the chicken, you, you, you cook it, and you make sure that you have the tortilla with it. Anything that you do that is going to be communal and has its importance, that is what you do, and that's what people look forward to. There's another thing in the community where I'm going to work, you help me. I'm going to put up my house, you come and help me. Now, I don't have to think about how much I'm going to pay you. The thing is, I help you, you help me. So when I do my house, ten men come to me, and when we are done, I have to go back and, and help these people the same way they help me. We have two types of dances. We have a dance that we call the, uh, the, the pleasure dance. The marimba music will come, or the harp music will come, and sometimes two of them come, they will alternate. They will play the music, all instrumental, and anybody who is interested, because it's fun occasion, it's a celebration, everybody can join in and dance. But we also have another kind of dance, like we have the deer dance, the Moro dance and, and others. Now, the dance itself is as, can also have another meaning. All right, it can also be like a like a reenactment re of the idea of the invasion or, or the coming of the Europe. Maya religion is a little different. In front of me here is I call this my table of sacrifice. Right, um, this is an altar. This is a this is a special or a very important part of our, our Mayaness. So, on different occasions, depending on the cycle of the moon or the year round, we decide what, da, what ceremony to, to do. Um, people like to do the, the solstice and the equinox ceremony. Uh, when there's going to be a Thanksgiving, for a particular reason. Like say, we are so grateful because we always feel our life is great. We're going to conduct a ceremony. Or if everything is falling apart and nothing is happening, like for example, the drought is too long, or I can't produce food because of the drought, then immediately the indigenous mind, the Maya people thinks, there is something wrong here and I must bring myself to the altar and ask for some help. This is the sacred incense. This came from a tree called the Kopal tree. And after it is extracted, it is left, it becomes sacred. I will take this piece of element and I put it in that, in that um, particular bowl, not in the dish but in the bowl, and I will think of the moment I'm going to make 
I'm going to repeat my creation story where I have the altar, I have this circle that surrounds me. And these are different energies that gives me the hope that we can always be connected with the different cardinal points of the earth. We have all this beauty that we can create as human beings and actually help to make a better world. So Maya people have a way to share this, and while this is burning, you're like feeding the greater power of there, which in other religions, we probably are saying the same thing, that God is above us. By doing this, you get hopefully the wisdom that you can step forward, you can move on. This is practiced by most rulers in those days. That's why they are able to project. That's why they are able to move. But we continue to do it because that's the only way we can make the connection with this matter of the environment. And so we must live in unity, in harmony with the environment. We just shouldn't be able to go there and just destroy everything. There's a time for hunting. There's a time for extracting. There's a time for spirituality. All around us is so alive that there's a connection in each and every one of those powers or those existence. Our culture is very important. That's the only hinge we have. This is our country and we have to be proud of it. And we have to ensure that we are the ones that are going to make it more beautiful every time. What happened to am I my brother's keeper? You know, what should matter is the quality of our lives. You know, that people are not kneeling on your neck, that you are free to grow and develop, that you are free to give, that um, you can be happy, you know, live well, have enough to eat, be respected, and respect others and be respected, have a good life, you know, where you don't have to worry about where the next meal is going to come from that you have a place to lay your head and sleep comfortably uh, and you can love <laughs> and you can be happy. <laughs> that is what life, that is what life should be about. Welcome back. And I sure hope you enjoyed that awesome demonstration of a pinch of what we got up here in the South. It is not good to look at the clouds or your work will not progress. Mayan proverb. We have showed today those who have dreamed of a modern Belize and those who work diligently to implement plans marking our development milestone on a long road of progress. The work continues, and in these trying times, let us show the world who we are. Let us be proud of our identity and everything that makes us Belizean. We now invite farmer teacher, party leader elect, minister of culture and co-chair of the National Celebrations Commission, Honorable Patrick Farber, to mark the opening of the September celebrations, commemorating the 222nd anniversary of the Battle of St. George's Key and the 39th anniversary of Belize's independence. My fellow Belizeans, at home and abroad, we are gathered, albeit virtually today, in beautiful Dangriga, just as we have done in past years, to launch our annual September celebrations. This year, of course, is different and more challenging as we are carrying out this launch using technology to do a virtual program of events. Belizeans everywhere, whether at home or abroad, these are unprecedented and dramatic times, a most unusual time for the entire world, including all little Belize, as we grapple with a disease that has affected millions, the pandemic COVID-19. Here in Belize, we continue to face tremendous economic and health issues brought on by the pandemic. All our norms for interaction and socialization have been modified drastically. Our health, education, and social institutions have been tested like never before, 
and our very system of governance has been forced to adopt the most stringent of measures, such as a state of emergency and partial and full country lockdowns in order to ensure our survival. As Belizeans, we are all being tested. Our personal and collective resolve to survive is on trial, and it's unlike anything we have ever experienced before. Belizeans must come to the realization of just how fragile we all are. This disease affects everyone. It spares no one based on ethnicity, gender, age, class, or status. We must, as a nation, unify and fight to survive. And as if COVID-19 was not enough, the metaphor Belizeans have come to learn very well when it rains, it pours, came to full display with the landfall of Hurricane Nana in South Belize. God's sparing hand and our resilient people once again literally weathered the storm. But we must not despair. In the midst of these chaotic times, amidst the uncertainty triggered by the insecurities of COVID-19 and the hurricane season, we must go forward and today in a tradition that has been for over 100 years, we launch our September celebrations. September has always provided us with a time to reflect on our history, to learn from our circumstances, whether dire or joyous, and eventually drive us to find and renew steely resolve within all Belizeans to overcome challenging times. I'm reminded of the theme submitted by 13-year-old Precious Martinez, hailing from the twin towns of San Ignacio, Santa Elena, in which she makes a clarion call to all of us that we must work together toward overcoming adversity, creating opportunities, and uniting for prosperity. I join her in making that call today, imploring that we must come together in the spirit of unity to overcome this great adversity that has befallen our people and the world. Let us bring our hearts, minds, and hands to a collective togetherness and rise to the challenge using our individual and Belizean talents to propose solutions and to create opportunities so that our children can adapt to the new ways of learning so that our farmers can keep producing our food, so that our productive sector can keep producing the needed goods and services, and so that our healthcare workers and frontline workers can continue to ensure the health and safety of all Belizeans. Let us again harness the indomitable spirit of our September forefathers from over 200 years ago, when our ancestors made a fateful decision to defend the then settlement of the Bay of Honduras at the mouth of the Belize River in the face of an overwhelming armada whose only purpose was to destroy the small settlement of what was to become modern day Belize. Let us put on the armor of our early patriotic and nationalistic leaders who individually and collectively resisted colonialism, brought about the change and brought Belize to independence in 1981. We are the generation of today. It is we who are now living in an independent Belize. We must be the ones to harness the spirit of September. It is our youth who must step forward and take their place as a generation that will bring Belize into the forefront of innovation and development. In the spirit of September, let us all, young and old, take our place in the world and champion a free and democratic Belize. This September, most of our events will be virtual on television and social media because of COVID-19. This will be done so that all of us can celebrate September at home, but still come together as one people. I encourage you to celebrate with your families and loved ones in the safety of your homes. I ask that as we celebrate, we take time out to reflect on what we all need to do to make Belize a happy, safe, and prosperous nation. I close by proudly acknowledging Dangriga as the culture capital and salute those who have furthered the art and culture. Today, I am pleased to announce that Dangriga's favorite son, the eminence Greece of Garifuna culture, Delvin Penn Caetano, has been selected as Belize's fourth artist emeritus. He now joins the ranks of Myrna Manzanares, Gerald Lord Rayburn, and Florencio Mess. Penn has been a composer, a painter, a singer, a songwriter, a percussionist, a guitarist, a leading cultural revivalist, and an ambassador for the Garinago. He is considered the grandfather of Punta Rock, and now he is officially a Belizean artist emeritus. His decades-long body of work is iconic 
and irreplaceable in our hearts and minds. Congratulations, Penn. We are immensely proud of you. It is in September when we celebrate Belize's independence that we proudly acknowledge our differences even as we celebrate the unity of us all being Belizean. In the spirit of September, let us rise up and take our rightful place in the world. I now declare the 2020 September celebrations open. May God bless all of us and keep our families. Long live Belize. Happy celebrations, Belize, as we celebrate with our theme, Overcoming Adversity, Creating Opportunities, Belizeans Unite for Prosperity. Thanks for the opportunity to have been your Director of Ceremonies. I now invite you to stay tuned to the cultural presentation which has been prepared for us by the Flavors Entertainment Team. They present to you from Belize with love. And I remind you, as we celebrate our heritage in this month, please be safe, no man. Wear your mask. Practice responsible social distancing and wash your hands frequently. For the September Celebrations Commission, I'm Gwen Nunes Gonzalez reporting from beautiful Dangria. located in Central America, with shorelines bordered to the east by the Caribbean Sea and dense jungles to the west. Our country is known for its diverse culture and ethnicities. It boasts some of the most beautiful tourist destinations in the Caribbean and is rich in its aquaculture and agricultural products. Ever since COVID-19 came to our shores, most of our industries, specifically tourism and entertainment, came to a halt. We are an entertainment organization who have managed to team up with our industry colleagues to share with the world what our beautiful country has to offer. We are traveling through the length and breadth of Belize, bringing to you all the beautiful stops, culture, people, destinations, aquaculture and agricultural produce, food, and most of all, music that Belize has to offer. Join us as we journey through our hidden jewel to present our first ever documentary and live stream concert from Belize with Love, the COVID edition. How to download Sec9 streaming app and sign up for Sec9 Plus in two easy steps. Step 